Mary Martin, Judith Spencer, good to see y'all on this perfect fall day. Hey, Shannon Lancaster. Perfect, perfect fall day, or almost fall. I'm not sure exactly when it becomes fall, but wow, what a great day. Leah. Hey, Julia. Oh, Lord, Julia. All right, so Julia just wrote, need prayers tonight for one of our students' families. The dad died of an overdose. Our little guy is only in first grade. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. What's the, if you can share, what's the student's first name so that we can be praying for him and his family? Holy cow. Good. Good, I'm glad mom reached out to connect with resources. That is good. Holy moly. Caleb, all right. Caleb, all right, so we're praying for Caleb tonight. Thanks for sharing, that's a, man, what a, what a heartbreak. Scott and Kathy. Good to see y'all. Melissa B. Always a party when Melissa's around. All right, so again, uh, worked some more today on the uh, outdoor service that we'll have on October 4th, St. Francis Day. Uh, sign up with the office with Mona. She can let you know about that. Uh, you can send an email. She'll probably send out a uh, an email sign-up sheet of some kind. Uh, so uh, again, I envision it to be uh, three short services at 9, 10, and 11, depending on how many people sign up. There'll probably be about 10 person, 10 people at a service, and uh, we'll be blessing animals if people bring them. We'll be praying for pets that have passed away in the last year. I found a real nice, simple liturgy for that uh, through a church in Little Rock. And so we're going to incorporate that. Uh, and just should be nice just to see one another. We're gonna gonna worship in our courtyard at the church right there in front in the courtyard. Uh, so if you're able and you feel comfortable, let Mona know. Sign up. Uh, we'll uh, be doing our best to broadcast it live as well. So even if you can't be there in person, we can still be praying for you and your pets. Hey, Jenny Fox. Uh, and that's another thing you can do. You can type in the name of your pet in the comment field, and we can be praying for them as well. So, try doing live stream and 
uh, in person all at the same time. People right in front of me and people on the camera as well. It's going to be holy chaos. <laughs> hey, Nikki, good to see you. Get up 6.30. All right, let's get started. We are on page 109 tonight, an order of worship for the evening. Page 109. Today is the Feast of St. Matthew. It's one of those big saint days uh, on the church calendar, so we'll be reading about that in a little bit. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Anything that's light and simple, yes. Being in the courtyard, it will be bring your own chair, definitely. Uh, service shouldn't last more than 15 or 20 minutes, but um, yeah, bring your own chair. All right, page 109. Ah, light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men so that they may see the good you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the lamp of charity which never fails, that it may burn in us and shed its light on those around us, and that by its brightness we may have a vision of that holy city where dwells the true and never failing light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then we continue on page 112 with the Fos Hilleron. Please uh, pray with me as you are able. Page 112. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. All right, our psalm for today is on page 766. It is a small portion of Psalm 119, page 766. Uh, we're going to be reading verses 33 through 40. Once you get there, please join me. Page 766, Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40. <clears throat> Let us read together. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. All right, our gospel reading for this evening, since this is the Feast of St. Matthew, uh, comes from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. This is the calling of the Apostle Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So let's hear it again. I'm going to read that gospel because I think it's pretty great. Uh, from the message, this modern transliteration of the Bible. All right, so again, this is Matthew 9, 9 to 13. Passing along, Jesus saw a man at his work collecting taxes. His name was Matthew. Jesus said, come along with me. Matthew stood up and followed him. Later, when Jesus was eating supper at Matthew's house with his close followers, 
a lot of disreputable characters came and joined them. When the Pharisees saw him keeping this kind of company, they had a fit and lit into Jesus' followers. What kind of example is this from your teacher, acting cozy with crooks and misfits? Jesus, overhearing, shot back, who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? Go figure out what the scripture means. I'm after mercy, not religion. I'm here to invite outsiders, not coddle insiders. I'm after mercy, not religion. I'm here to invite outsiders, not coddle insiders. The word of the Lord. All right, and then we have a short biography of St. Matthew. Matthew, one of Jesus' disciples, is probably to be identified with Levi, a tax collector mentioned by Mark and Luke. In the Gospel of Matthew, it is said that Matthew was seated in the custom house when Jesus bade him follow me. Um, yep. Uh, when Jesus called him, he at once left everything, followed the master, and later gave a dinner for him. Mark and Luke also note that Levi was a tax collector. In all three accounts, Jesus is severely criticized for eating at the same table with tax collectors and other disreputable persons. <laughs> Anybody else been a disreputable person before? <laughs> tax collectors were viewed as collaborators with the Roman state, extortioners who took money from their own people to further the cause of Rome and to line their own pockets. They were spurned as traitors and outcasts. The Jews so abhorred them that pious Pharisees refused to marry into a family that had a tax collector as a member. Clearly, Matthew was hardly the type of man that a devout Jew would have had among his closest associates. Yet, Jesus noted that it was the, the tax collector rather than the proud Pharisee who prayed the acceptable prayer, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. There's frequent favorable reference to tax collectors in the many sayings of Jesus in the Gospel according to Matthew. So I'll pause for a moment. The way that they collected taxes was that the Roman government would say, we need to collect at least $20,000 from this particular area and then people would bid on that contract. They'd say, well, you know, I'll collect it, I'll collect it in the shortest possible time, all that sort of thing. And whoever won the tax contract would then hire some people and go into that area and maybe they'd collect $40,000 instead. And they would ship the 20,000 off to Rome, keep 20 for themselves, that sort of thing. Matthew was called early in Jesus' ministry, but that he wrote the gospel that bears his name is seriously doubted by scholars. It is, however, generally accepted that his sayings of Jesus have been included in that gospel. It may be that the author of the first gospel took from Matthew's work some of the numerous parables and comments that make this gospel so popular. Through this gospel especially, Jesus speaks not only of faith and eternal life, but of duties towards one's neighbors, families, and even enemies. Tradition has it that Matthew, having converted many persons to Christianity in Judea, traveled to the east, but there is no certain evidence for this. He has been venerated as a martyr, but the time and circumstances of his death are unknown. All right, our canticle for this evening is on page 86. It is canticle 10. Uh, when you get there, please join me in praying that together. Canticle 10, page 86. Canticle 10, page 86. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. We continue on page 120 with the Apostles' Creed. When you get there, please join me as you are able.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 122 with Suffrages B. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the witness of your Apostle and Evangelist Matthew to the Gospel of your Son, our Savior. We pray that, after his example, we may with ready wills and hearts obey the calling of our Lord to follow him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are just, you are merciful, you are omniscient, you are sovereign. We ask, we who are made in your image and know what you want, to give us the courage to do what you require of us. Help us to recognize that social systems are not always equitable and to do the things that will end oppression, take care of the poor, welcome foreigners, that we will want the best for others and place their interest above our comfort and convenience. Grant this so we may be more like Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. If you will, turn with me to page 822 and we'll pray prayer 23 together. Page 822 has prayer for local government on it. Once you get there, we'll pray together. Page 822, prayer 23. Please pray with me. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in this commonwealth the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently or aloud.
We give thanks, Heavenly Father, for this amazing and beautiful fall weather. I thank you for each person gathered around worshiping tonight. I give thanks for who they are, who you've made them to be, the light, the joy, the love that they bring into this world. Uh, I ask that you will help them to be at peace in the midst of these troubled times, to stay healthy in the midst of these pandemic times. That you will help them to be a light to others as well, that you will shine through them. Uh, we lift up Caleb and his family to you asking for the repose of the soul of his father and for the resources that he and his family need for good grieving. Uh, we give thanks for Julia and for others who are around them during this time. We lift up Marilyn and others preparing for surgery. Uh, we lift up Will and Candy and others who are recovering from surgery. Uh, just, I lay before you the concerns of everyone here this evening, those spoken, those unspoken. Please keep them safe. Uh, heal their hearts and, and may your will for them be done. Thank you for this time together. Amen. Hey, Jennifer Lee, good to see you. All right, our final prayer this evening is on page 113. It begins, Almighty, Everlasting God. Once you get there, please join me in praying that. Tonight you'll be getting prayers and full service lawn care as well. And what other church offers that? Page 113, the prayer that begins Almighty Everlasting God. Let us pray together. Almighty Everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you, present in your word and sacraments, to recognize in you to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your Son as he bore his passion, and let it burn in us to eternal life and to the ages of ages. Amen. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Dear friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, again, good to see you, good to be here with you, good to pray with you and walk with you. We are, uh, once again, getting ready for uh, small in-person services on October 4th. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, blessing of the animals and that sort of thing, just let Mona know in the church office. You can call and leave a message or shoot her an email. Uh, let's see, and at 8 o'clock tonight, Deacon Sue will be here with Compline, uh, bringing you that little bit of holiness at the end of the day. So. Blessing friends, I'll see you back here tomorrow at 6.30 tomorrow.